helium into storage vessels on the first and second stages. During flight, we will take that cold helium and run it through the heat exchangers on the Merlin engines. The resulting hot helium is used to fill the empty volume in the fuel and LOX tanks that's created by the engine pumps as they pull propellant out of the stage. At T minus seven minutes, we began engine chill. This is where we opened the pre-valves between the first stage prop tanks and the nine Merlin engines. This allows a little bit of cold liquid oxygen to flow through the turbo pumps, which brings them down to a temperature close to that of the super chilled propellant that will soon be flowing through the engines at liftoff. We're just about four and a half minutes away from liftoff. The vehicle is healthy and we're currently working no issues. The range is ready to support. And as for weather, we can see that it's a beautiful blue sky day in Florida. Uh, there is less than 10% uh, chance of violating the launch uh, commit criteria, so basically the weather rules. And we can see on the screen there that the, uh, the clamps there around the second stage just below the uh, fairing have begun to open. So at this point in time, Falcon 9 is moving into the final stages of the countdown. There on your screen, you can see our strong back. Um, that's part of the transporter erector, also called the TE. The TE is what we use to roll out the rocket from the launch pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. Uh, the TE is also what routes power, fluids, and communication to both the rocket and the satellite. The transporter erector has the launch mount, uh, and that's what the first stage is attached to, uh, and the strong back that is hinged to the launch mount. And if you listen closely, you can hear the hissing and popping of pressure um, venting from the rocket and the plumbing in the transporter erector. As I mentioned before, LOX load is underway for both the first and second stages. RP1 loading is complete on both stages. And it looks like LOX load on the first stage just finished up. Vehicle remains in good health. The gaseous oxygen uh, that you can start to see around the vehicle venting uh, from the base of Falcon 9, that's from the chillin' of the Merlin turbo pumps that occurred at T minus seven minutes. One minute before liftoff, you'll hear the announcement that Falcon 9 is in startup, which means that the rocket's own internal computers are now autonomously controlling the launch countdown. As I mentioned before, our satellites are there inside the fairing. They continue to be healthy. The team is tracking no issues on the rocket. And as a reminder, if we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. And we have just two minutes to go before launch. At this point in time, LOX load on the second stage has just completed. And we can see the white gaseous clouds around the vehicle um, as, like I said, LOX load is complete on second stage as well as first stage, so those lines uh, we'll be venting uh, from the TE. Ground gas close out. The next milestone we're coming up to is startup. You'll hear the call out for that at T minus one minute. And that's the indication that the flight computer has taken over. All right, there's that call out. Falcon 9 is in startup. At this point in time, stage one and stage two are beginning to pressurize for launch. LD, go for launch. And there was our final go for launch today from our launch director. At this point in time, as we approach T minus 30 seconds, all systems are go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. Let's listen in to the final countdown. T 
minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and liftoff. Vehicles pitching downrange. One unit pressures are nominal. Nominal. All right, as you can see, Falcon 9 has cleared the tower, lifted off from Cape Canaveral Falcon Space Force Station. Supersonic. We just heard the call out that the vehicle is supersonic. We're currently going to throttle down the engines in preparation for Max Q coming Max up. Max Q. In, oh, there we heard it. So that was the moment of greatest aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle will experience in flight today. Everything looking nominal with stage one trajectory. Now we have five events coming up in quick succession. Miko or main engine cutoff, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, and the boost back burn. And you can follow along with those events there at the, on the timeline at the bottom of your screen. Beautiful view of the, Coda, of the Florida coastline. Main engine cutoff coming up in just under 30 seconds. As I mentioned before, we will be landing, uh, attempting to land the booster back on land at landing zone one. This is known as return to launch site, as opposed to um, a drone ship landing. Stage separation confirmed. Back startup. Stage one boost back startup. So you can see there on the right hand side of your screen, second stage MVAC engine has ignited. The first stage on the left hand side is performing the boost back. Uh, which, as you saw just moments ago, the first stage flipped itself over and is now making its way back to the coast of Florida. Everything looking nominal with second stage trajectory there on the right-hand side of your screen. All right, so there we heard the call out that the boost back burn has concluded. That was the first of three burns that the first stage will perform today. And we can see the grid fins beginning to deploy there on the left-hand side of your screen. The next event we have coming up is fairing deployment. All right, there you can see the two fairing halves have separated, fallen away from the vehicle, exposing the 105 spacecraft to the vacuum of space. As a reminder, we will be attempting to recover these brand new fairing halves once they make their way back to Earth. We're currently in the first of two MVAC burns. This first one will last until eight plus eight minutes and 20, T plus eight minutes and 26 seconds about another four minutes from now. Beautiful views from the first stage there on the left-hand side of your screen and the second stage on the right. The next milestone will be the first stage booster re-entry burn. 
Falcon 9 executes an entry burn to slow itself down before hitting the dense part of the atmosphere. Without this burn, relying on the atmosphere alone to slow down the Falcon 9 would put unnecessary strain on the rocket. And there we can see the east coast of Florida. Stage two on a nominal trajectory. Space coast there in the background of, um, on the left-hand side. Once again, we are uh, launching the Transporter 3 mission today. This is SpaceX's third dedicated SmallSat rideshare program mission. And it's our second mission of 2022. SpaceX is targeting at least three dedicated rideshare flights to sun synchronous orbit per year. And we also offer opportunities for a ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch every couple of weeks. Small sats can ride to space on SpaceX's Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, as well as Starship in the not too distant future. On the left-hand side of your screen, uh, we can see those grid fins um, have deployed. Falcon 9 has four hypersonic grid fins positioned at the base of the inner stage, and they orient the rocket during reentry by moving the center of pressure. We can also see some white puffs of gas coming off from Falcon 9. Those are cold nitrogen gas, uh, which help with attitude control. After first stage landing, the second stage will cut off its MVAC engine and relight it approximately 45 minutes later for deployment of all 105 spacecraft. As for first stage, its next event is the entry burn. Stage two, FTS has saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. And there on your screen, we can see that that entry burn has begun. Once again, this burn is designed to slow the booster down as it returns through the dense part of the atmosphere. Stage two on nominal trajectory. As we just heard there. Stage one, entry burn shut down. Everything continuing to look good with second stage. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be attempting to recover this booster for the 10th time today and we're targeting a land landing uh, at landing zone one. The first stage has just one more burn left, the Take landing burn. Yes, it's safe. It begins just before touchdown and provides the booster a soft descent before landing. About the same time that Falcon lands, we are expecting Seco or second engine cutoff uh, one of our second stage. Just a few seconds away from landing. Stage and one is transonic. Vehicles traveling around 900 miles per hour really puts the deceleration into perspective. In the span of less than a minute, we'll have reduced from twice, this, twice the speed of Stage a jet one landing burn. all the way down to zero as the rocket lands. There's a view on the right-hand side. Stage two in terminal guidance. Of the landing back at landing zone one. As you heard from the call out there and from the cheers behind me, uh, we have successfully landed this Falcon 9 for the 10th time. It's also the 102nd recovery of an orbital class rocket. Nominal parking orbit. All right, so we just heard there, second stage uh, had a good orbit. So we cut off the, or shut down the MVAC engine on the second stage. And as we just heard, we had a uh, good orbit. So we're now going to coast for the next 45 minutes or so while we wait for second engine start two or SES two. Uh, we'll see you back here at around T plus 55 minutes. Let's keep. 